So good morning, everybody, and welcome to our monthly uh, webinar series this month, um, running it on the Opera 3 Sales Ledger with an inclusion of the Credit Management Center um, as we go along. Just a little agenda for the morning. Um, we've just done our introductions and welcomes and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to move on to the actual module sales ledger with the recommended order of setup. Now, um, you would know that all of your ledgers are obviously already set up, but this gives you a very good idea where the information is coming from and should that need changing or restructuring, you know where, it, where it's from. We'll look at the maintenance, we'll look at the how to process, we'll look at some reporting, and we'll look at uh, the utilities um, as part of the um, series this morning. So firstly, the sales ledger is an application that provides quite a flexible means of referencing your customer accounts um, and it includes a number of useful analysis features and dynamic views that help you to produce meaningful and effective sales reports and control the update of sales transactions to the nominal ledger. So basically, it's our sales ledger where we keep our customer information, our customer accounts are there, we analyze our customers there, we have views in there that help us to effectively and meaningful see what's happening within our sales side and our customers. We use the processing command to store the data for our customers' account records, um, and therefore we record accurate customer details against, the, against these that identifies our customers, who they are, what they are, what controls them, what terms they have, and that kind of thing. The sales ledger is linked to the nominal ledger if you needed to by selecting the option in the uh, profiles section of the system. So you can manage your customers efficiently and control customer records by creating profiles, trading terms, process invoices, credit notes, receipts, and refunds. The sales ledger has built-in credit control facilities and it improves the cash flow by allowing tighter control in the management of customer payments with calculation of average debt -to days and revenue forecasts. And this is interesting because we'll see all of this in our reporting section later and you'll see how it all comes together when we go through. So our sales ledger, as you guys know by now, is structured in the following way. We've got our processing area with our credit management center. If you have credit management center on your license, um, we've got our view, analysis, history and reports and data reports. Then we have our utilities and our maintenance. So how does the sales le ledger link to um, other modules? So the sales ledger grabs information from sales order pro processing or invoicing if that is um, part of your system. Um, it will feed the information from there. Um, it will feed your CRM and, D uh, and your customers and contacts would be shared by the application. It links to the cash book for sales receipts. It links to the nominal ledger for your sales postings and it links to costing if you have costing for costing on jobs. So the first thing in the recommended order of setup, within our utilities, we have our set options. And within our set options, we've got a whole host of areas that we can select. These are areas that runs our module effectively. And there's a whole host of options available here for you to select. Now, some of these options are relating to perhaps a little bit of development that Oasis has done, um, like the auto advanced posting there, and I'll explain that in a moment. So some of these options are pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy to understand. So do I want to produce a statement if there is a zero balance? Yes or no. Do I want to produce a statement if there's a credit balance? Yes or no. If it's a foreign currency customer, do I want the, uh, the statement to be in the foreign currency? Yes or no. So this is the kind of information that I, uh, that I select on here. Down here, we've got things like how long do I keep my transactions for? You can put up to 99 periods, as well as images, what our default credit limit would be for our customers, um, what the nominal company ID is. So um, some companies might have a sales ledger that sits no separate to the nominal ledger as a separate company, and therefore the sales ledger would feed another company's, company's nominal ledger, and that's what this is meaning here, and what the default bank account is for this company. Some of the options here they should be aware of, the allow advanced postings, is when you get to a period end, a month end period effectively, and you
you want to process the transaction into the next period, but you haven't closed your current period yet, by ticking on the allow advanced postings, you are um, asked if you want to advance the posting into the next period. And then once you do a period end, that posting is then part of the new period that has been created. The auto advanced postings that you see that's ticked on there is a literal utility that always have created. Um, so this allows you without having to remember to come on and tick on the allow advanced postings. When a transaction is dated into the next period, it would automatically ask you if you want to advance the posting rather than not effectively. So the posting would also always appear in the in the right period. Um, and then some of the other uh, settings on here, self-explanatory, if you want to include dormant customers on searching, and that kind of information. And again, a lot of uh, information here on how much and how long you keep information for. Some of the other areas that you have to think of setting up um, is within our utility section is the adjustment names. Now the adjustment names is, if you look on the screen, what you will notice is, is when I post an adjustment to my um, sales ledger account, those are the reasons and the nominal ledgers that might be affected when I post that adjustment. And if I do foreign gains, uh, exchange gains and losses, here at the bottom, we've got some codes that we automatically default to when those things come into play. The same we have with receipt name. So when I receive cash from my customer, how do I receive it? By check, by cash, is it a BAX that's come in? Is it a credit card payment? And how I deal with those. So these cash book types comes from my cash book, which we'll obviously cover in another period. Um, but what it means is how do I bank that money to into my bank? How do I get it into my bank account? If it's back, it goes straight in and I select that and it hits my bank account immediately. But if I have something like a payslip receipt here, it keeps batching my information together until I effectively go to the bank with it. When I close the batch down and I post all three or four uh, checks plus the cash that is there in one sales receipt hitting my bank account. And exactly the same in refund name. So should I have to do a refund on my customer account, a sales refund that is, how is this going to be handled if I selected to do that through my cash book? And that really is just very briefly the re recommended order of setup. And we'll see those areas in a moment as we go through. Um, after we've looked at the next section, which is the maintenance area within, uh, within the system. So the maintenance area is laid out in um, quite a few areas in there. And somehow I seem to skip that. There you go. So we've got a whole host of maintenance areas. I'm briefly going to go through each of them to explain what they are and how you might or might not want to be using them within your own systems. Um, and these are areas where you just literally create these labels that you then apply throughout the system effectively on your on your customers. So the first things we're going to be looking at is the sales regions. So sales regions gives me well, what it is, it's a region. So you can set up all different regions and you can choose how you want to use this. It could be regions within a county. It could be counties within a country. It could be countries in the world. It could be economic areas. It could be anything you want and how you might want to analyze your regions. Territories. In the demo, demo data, they've selected to use territories as, a, um, as the sales representative uh, for that specific customer. So now you can see you can start building up a picture here of the territories and of the uh, regions that is being affected by those. We go down to our sales type. So when I do it, uh, a sale, what kind of type of sale it is or what kind of customer it is. So in this instance here, I have a um, catering business. So there might be corner shops, bakeries and that kind of thing. Just another way of analyzing my data. I can also set out sales routes. In my example here, sales routes are the different days um, the different postcodes, sorry, and the days that those postcodes are serviced. So if you fall in the ME postcode, your sales route would be the ME postcode, and you could have your order any day from a Monday to a Friday, for example. 
A sales dispatch works in the same day. So in my instance, the sales dispatch is the day of the week that is going to be going out. So this could be Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but it could also be how you dispatch it via UPS or a different courier or in-house trucks or however that is. Sales code is pretty important because the sales code is when you do a sale um, and you select the sales code that the sale relates to, it is which nominal code in your structure is going to be hit by the actual sales value. It also defines what the, the default VAT code for that sales code is, whether you deal with quantities or whether you deal with costing analysis. So if you've got the costing module in play, when you do a sale, do you want to apply costing to that sale? So this is the sales code that you set up. Terms profile, while it's pretty straightforward what our terms are, it's the terms that we offer our customer, and this is just the area that we set it up in. So in this instance, for example, we've got the 28th um, of the second month after the invoice, so it's quite a long term there, but it automatically um, does that for me by selecting the due date option in the bottom, where it says second day of the month following. You can select the number of days, and then you also will see the credit management section in there. So do you uh, work with correspondence? Is there a minimum debt if you do? If this is a VAT inclusive customer or not? That area that's highlighted by the red um, box is where if I use invoicing or sales order processing and integrate with my sales ledger, then I can have discount groups, I can select price lists from the sales order processing, and I can apply invoice discount for everybody that these terms are applied to. In the same way, I have customer profile. So a customer profile is a profile that um, groups together those customers that have effectively the same trading terms and profile with me. So if you look on the screen, you'll see I have a profile for my Euro customer traders, for example. I have selection box of open item and statements. Those select whether or not the open items at the end of a period end is balanced forward or open items brought forward. Statements is whether they want to have a statement produced or not. Currency, you select from the currencies you've set up and any bank accounts associated with anybody in this customer profile. Multiple bank accounts have the option to use multiple bank accounts instead of just the selected one there. You can also override the control account, uh, the default control account set in set, set options. You can override here. You might want to have a total separate trade debtors for euro traders than you might have for for dollar traders than you might have for yen traders, for example. And you might over want to override that per profile in here. And again, default VAT codes might be applied here. The receipt and refund Fund there at the bottom is you'll you select the you see you will notice the options from uh, the refund and receipt names we looked at earlier on. You basically use the drop down box to say when customers on this profile pays me, how do I receive the money? You normally through backs, so it's a default. And if I refund them, how do I refund them? And then how long I keep transactions for. So uh, pr a way of grouping my different customers together. So dispute, when I put invoices on dispute, I create a list of reasons for putting them on dispute. Pretty straightforward, lame. Contacts, when I have my contacts, what kind of contacts they are. I have account contacts, I have an order contact, I might have an account manager, etc., etc. I set these up as, a, as a contacts within my system. So when I create a new contact, I can then apply that to them. I want to mention the views and we'll set these up in a second. So the view is just an area where you define the views that you might want to look at your data for. We'll define a view in a second so you can see how they are. But down these different levels of views, you have things to choose for like account, delivery account. You've got analysis code. There's region, territory, customer type, analysis codes, product code, month and years in there. So you can really look extensively in your data through this view window. And this is just an area where you set those views up so that you can use them. And I'll show you that in a second when we go through. 
Then for credit management, we've got in maintenance credit management groups. So how do I group my customers into groups for credit management? Action types, when I do actions on my diary, what kind of action these are. Um, it could be anything from sending an email, receiving an email, making a phone call, receiving money in a promise that has been agreed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The outcome types is when I have um, a result to my credit management, what kind of outcome that is, or if I've changed in this instance, I might have changed the credit limit, so that's not over the limit anymore, um, for example. So it's all just different outcome types for credit management. And lastly, I'm going to mention very briefly is the Pegasus Web Exchange sales groups. So this is something if you use mobile sales through Pegasus Web Exchange is a group, it's grouping of my customers effectively for that specific purpose. So at this point, I think we can pop over to Opera and have a quick look at all these um, maintenance areas that we've looked at. So firstly, we, we've looked at the regions. And again, I'm, I'm not going to say much about most of these, but it's really just a list of all the different regions that's been set up. This is the, this is the case also for the territories we looked at. It's the case for the types we've looked at. So really just a way of setting up information in there. So the same we've done with the routes, I create a route and the same I've do done with dispatch. On all these areas, to, it's worth to know to create a new route, dispatch, for example, I use the new icon here at the bottom. It literally creates for me, um, let me just see where I've gotten to, it creates for me a blank form. I can call this I can save that and I now have a new dispatch route called Saturday uh, somewhere that, that I can select from when I use this drop down box. Creating new items is the same all over through Opera. Sales codes, just to mention again, it's the sales code that applies when we do a sale. Um, it might be against our product or if we just do a direct sale through the sales ledger in a moment, you'll see you basically use the sales code, which then hits my nominal ledger. The terms profile, as we mentioned before, is the, ter is the terms we set up and then apply to our customers. And we'll see this in a second when we create a new customer. And again, I talked about the profiles, the different profiles available. For example, I have is a standard customer. Uh, I have a US dollar customer. I have trade customer and I have customers who don't want a statement. So obviously the no statement there is ticked on. Again, the reasons just a list of reasons why I might dispute an invoice and the, uh, the contacts are the same. The sales view here is I'm going to set a new one up so that when we looked at the sales views a little bit later on, you might want to see um, what I've done. So I'm going to create a new one. I'll call it my view. I'm going to make it the default view. So when I look through the data, um, I don't know. Let's look at the year and then let's look at the month and then look at the. Let's look at the analysis code and within the analysis code, we might want to see the account that relates to. I'm going to save that. So I've got one, two, three, four levels of analysis set up for my view, which we will check later when we look at that view area up there. The credit debt, uh, the credit management groups, again, is just labels. We apply for credit management, um, credit management action types, as well as outcome types. And the last was the Pegasus Web Exchange sales groups. So as you can see, all these maintenance areas probably pre-set up in your system already, but um, you might want to change some areas in there or have a look at it again. So the next area we're going to be looking at, uh, again, quite briefly, is the customer um, account creation, looking at some sales processing, how you set up customers for emails. And for credit management, I'm going to uh, break up 
my voice and play a couple of videos that I've edited shortly from Pegasus that I feel actually shows off the whole functionality of the credit management very well um, in a demo format. So it would break a little bit from what I'm um, kind of doing here. So on customer account creation, um, you are used to the sales processing screen. It's the screen there where everything comes together. And when we create a new account for the first time, and I'm going to do that in an option in a moment, those highlighted areas automatically pops up for me to select from if I haven't selected a model account, because it allows me then to go through and change these options for the new account that I would have set up. I'm going to go into Opera. Let's create a new account. So we open our sales ledger processing screen. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create a new icon. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm going to use the new create new icon to create a new record. I'm going to call it A A A A A just so that we can have it in the beginning. Now I want to talk about the options here. You can create an account without a model. You can create an account using a model if I have set model accounts up, or you can create a model account. Now, what is a model account? If I create a model account, I create an account that I can model the creation of all new accounts on after that. I could have several model accounts. I could have a model account for Euro customers. I could have a model account for UK customers. I could have a model account for UK customers on 30 days, and I could have a model account for UK customers on 45 days, for example. So it's just a model that I set up. I'm going to create it without a model at this point in time. And here I get to select a customer profile. You'll notice from the um, maintenance section, which one I want to do. I'm going to do a standard customer here. And in the terms profile, I'm going to do a 45 day terms. And to say OK to that. What happens? It gives me um, information, a blank screen that I obviously now have to fill the information in. So let's just create a little company there. So I'll just put an information in. Now I'm going to put an account contact in here because um, it's going to be important for later on. Etc. So I'll just put my phone number in there. Okay, so typical normal information I have of my customer. When I click on the save button, this is where the interesting thing happens. Now you'll remember from the uh, action button, one of the areas in there was the analysis. In fact, the third area down was the analysis. Now from the analysis, I get to select which region they belong to. For example, I can say we are Southeast England, which territory is so who's the salesperson who's going to be looking after that? Let's give it to Mr. McAllister. What kind of customer type this is? Well, it's in the name, it's a corner shop. Is there a cost center, a project, or a department? I can select that. Say OK to that. It brings me through to deliver. So, how am I going to deliver the orders to this customer? Is there a method? Which day it is, for example? They get their stuff on a Monday. What route is it they go through? They might go through the TN route, and let's change that then to a Wednesday, for example. What warehouse in my system is it coming from? Only if you link to stock processing with warehousing. Acknowledgement, if I create an order for them using sales order processing, do I want them to get an order acknowledgement through an email, for example? And the last thing is the export area. Now, obviously, because I have a full system, it recognizes that I might do multi-currency, et cetera, et cetera. So I could select here country and VAT numbers and that kind of thing um, if 
I have that information at hand. And there we go. I've created a full customer like uh, that within um, within a, a few seconds, really, um, because I'm talking a lot in between. But I want to come back to the action button and I want to come back to the options. So I might have selected these options on that very first screen where I created the customer on and I selected the standard customer. I might want to come in here and decide actually they are not going to be a standard customer. They're going to be a no statement customer. I can come and change that in here and I can save that and I can save that against the record and that's fine. Or even on something like the terms, I might have said the 45 day terms, but what I really want to mention is here is this email area against the terms. Now, you'll notice some of them are available and some are not. These email boxes become available dependent on the contact information that you have here on the front screen. An account contact means the person who receives statements, performers, invoices, and credit notes. It means I can seek, select on here which items this company is going to be emailed. In the same way, if I put an order contact and email in there, the order, delivery note, and quotes will become available for emailing because that would be traditionally the same person who receives it, a different person receives it. However, you can put the same contact details in both boxes if it's the same person in the, person in the company that deals with both of those processes. So, let's get back to the presentation. So that's kind of when I set a new record up, I create an account and that's kind of what I get. It guides me through those options within the action button to set the new account up. And I can also go into those areas once I've created new accounts or even old accounts to go and change information. I don't know, let's say you, want, you need to change the route because they've changed locations, for example. Next thing in the sales processing I want to mention is the actual processing area. So the invoice, credit, receipt, refund, adjustment, etc. areas within there. I'm also going to mention the customers for email, but because we've just spoken about it. And as you can see from my screen there, in the account contact, the email contact, order contact, and email address for the order contact, if I have information in there, it becomes available within the terms and you can see on my screenshot everything is available um, and therefore you can select which documents you would like to email out and not print. You can always still print them of course because you know the publisher in Opera allows you to do that. And with that there are email profiles that can be or needs to be set up which mimics the exact profile of, an, of, of when you print your um, thing and the email profile really is not an email. It's not a design of the actual invoice. What it is is the email that goes with the invoice that tells you what it is. So the subject and if you put a message in there, for example. And these are personable because you can use information from your database to complete that message for. So your customer is it's personable for the customer who received it. So let's pop back into Opera and for our brand new customer here, I'm going to go and create an invoice. So when you go and you create a brand new invoice in processing, you get a whole host of information available for this to do. I need to stress here, the invoice you create in this instance is an invoice that you might have created on Word or on Excel or on a different application because you are actually not producing anything printed from invoicing here. If you have sales order processing or invoice um, invoicing, then that information is transferred to your sales ledger where you can see that information and if you double click, you will see an image of the invoice. In this case, when you post an invoice and you double click the information, as you will see later on, you only see the analysis information that sits behind the invoice. 
effectively the sales codes that we set up earlier on in the maintenance area. So by posting a new invoice, I get to select a date I'm posting for. You see three dates here because I use open period accounting. I can select what my tax point is, what my when my nominal ledger is hit by that, or when the date of the transaction is. I can put on the invoice number that I know I might have created. I I might call it whatever I I want in my second reference. I put the full transaction value in there, including the VAT amount. I say OK to that. The analysis codes you'll now notice will be those sales codes that we had seen earlier on. Let's just do a little sale. I might search here on sale, see what comes up. Let's do um, a lease sale. I'm not going to send a co select a cost center. I'm not going to do a quantity because for me it's not important in this instance. And I'm going to put a thousand pound on there because I've got the 200 pound VAT that goes through there. I can put a cost in there for this lease if I want to. I'm not going to do that. As you can see, I've posted that invoice, the value. I say yes, I'm sure I want to post the invoice. It puts the invoice right there on my um, account immediately. Now, it's a good point to look at the account view. I can double click that icon. I can view my transaction in this instance. Let's just view all of them. You'll see the transaction I just entered on there. And when I double click on it, you'll see the, the analysis information that sits behind that. So how much of that is goods, what the VAT value was, and what sales code has been affected by it. If you have sales order processing or invoicing, if you double click at this point in time, it will literally just pop up an, a PDF image of the invoice that went to your customer. In the same way, I can produce a credit note on the account. Same information, same header information is available for me there. I can name it the same. Let's put 120 discount on there. I put it on the same account. So 100 pound plus VAT. Go out of that. I can post that. Are you sure you want to post the correct notes? I say yes. So immediately what you notice there is the amount is changed by the credit note. And if I view it via this option this time, I get the same box up. I can actually see the credit note sitting there. Now, next step down, the customer sends me money. I receive the money in. I receive my money in. It comes through here. Again, I've got my posting dates. I can put reference numbers in to mix it all in. Yep, it's telling me it's a duplicate because I've posted that kind of thing before. I'm changing my reference here to backs. And the reason I'm doing that because I haven't changed that to tell my system that this customer is going to be paying by backs. And here I'm putting the amount in. The on account means if I tick on account and I say, okay, all that's going to happen, it's going to post that £1,080 on the account and it's not going to be allocated to everything or anything. The overpay by and the underpay and clear invoices is if there's over and underpayment, so how do I want to deal with that? I'm just going to say OK here and post it. Now, I've got two transactions there. I'm just going to literally use my F5 key. I'm going to allocate in full. I've got nothing left to allocate. I'm going to say OK to that. And in this very instance, the money is posted on the account. It's also hit my cash book, so it can be reconciled when I receive the um, bank statements from, my, from the bank. Um, a refund, well, the same as the receipt is a refund. So if they've overpaid me and I want to refund my customer, for example, I'm not sure who does that, but when you do, that's the the process you would follow. And if you need to make an adjustment using the adjustment names we set up earlier on, you need to do so. I can't show you an allocation because we've paid the allocation now and there's nothing to find. However, I'm going to talk about the rectify allocation because this is something we can show. So first things, it wants you to specify a date range or when you are looking for that. 
we know it's today are only going to go for today's transactions and immediately what it's found is the the one up the one allocation i did today what do i want to do with this i can in the selected column double click that one it selects all of them because they go together anyway and now it will unallocate all of those when i go to the next step this remove allocated transaction i don't know why you ever would want to do that but it will remove one part of the allocation leaving it in a mess i would not suggest anybody really use that option um so yes uh just to mention that but it removes an allocated transaction from the cash book so the next screen comes through it picks up what you want to unallocate i'm going to say i don't know incorrect allocation for example i'm going to start that i want to rectify that process the lovely opera will give me a report about this as you always know i'll just put that on the screen for a second um shows me what it's um, unallocated there we go and now i can just finish that and would i like to reallocate the transactions if i say yes it goes back into the allocation screen that sits in the action button if i say no it leaves it unallocated on the account and i can go and do the allocation myself again so i'm going to say no to that and all it's done now although there's no balance on the account if i look at um, all the transactions there's no allocation against it so now i can come in the allocations in the action button and i can come in here and i can um, f5 or pay full or however you want to manage that but i can come in here and i can come and allocate those transactions if i now look at outstanding transactions it will tell me there's nothing because it's nothing outstanding it's allocated and matched together with each other that really is all the areas i wanted to mention in there and it kind of takes care of the whole um, sales processing um, side now Credit management. Uh, credit management is quite a big area within the um, module, in my opinion, probably as big as the rest of the module combined by itself. So what I did want to say about credit management is that it's an actual um, area that brings together all your customers in a credit management way where you have access and availability to look at their information in one area from a company point of view towards individual accounts and even individual transactions you can set diary actions to remind you to do stuff and you can manage the debt 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 through a series of debtors letters that you set up yourself decide how many they are and how you send them out to your customers a lot of information available on this um, on this module and i think um, instead of me faffing around and going through it i've condensed the information in two small videos one five and a half minutes the other one is only seven minutes or so and i'm going to show them one after the other now and i think um, it makes this credit management um, area much more understandable in my opinion I hope you can hear the um, vo talking. I, I have set the system, so you should be able to. Knowing who owes you what and when they are going to pay you is critical to managing your customer debt. That's exactly what the Credit Management Centre is designed to do. At the heart of the Credit Control Centre, as a financial director or credit control manager, you will find a complete overview of the financial position of your company. This information, of course, can be restricted to only allow the relevant personnel access to this sensitive data. So here we can see a graphical representation of management information, including the total invoice debt. So not only can we see how our credit management team is performing, but even more importantly, we can see where our money is. This includes overdue cash to be collected and invoices not yet due for payment through to age invoice debt and also our company turnover. 
Customer debts instantly shows us who's got our cash ordered by who owes us the most. It displays any disputed amounts, unallocated amounts, which gives us a clearer picture of what cash we have already received, which allows us to focus our attention on the accounts that will make the biggest difference to our bank balance. We have clear visibility of outstanding actions and disputed invoices. This helps us to see issues that need to be resolved before any cash will be received. Clear financial ratios such as your overall company average debtor and creditor days with further information all at our fingertips such as a further detailed breakdown by period of our debtor analysis. But of course the key to any credit management system is how much money has been promised to us. So here we can clearly see cash that's been promised to us today over the next 1 to 30 days, 31 to 60 and also over 60 days. We can also see any promised payments that are now overdue. The Accounts and Transactions tab is where we as individual credit controllers can chase our customers for money owed. Up at the top list the customers that we are currently chasing. Our customers can be organised and filtered into user-definable credit management groups, so for example perhaps we might have a high risk, medium risk and a low risk group. In addition, we can filter by overdue accounts and in order of their most overdue balance. We may also want to filter on customers that are over their credit limit with the ability to sort our list view as required. Selecting a customer filters all of the information on this dashboard for the specific account including the total invoice debt, where we can also view the age debtors graphically for this particular customer, their turnover and any promised payments. We can also access further information such as the account contacts too. Any actions, either complete or not yet completed, are also displayed, which is where we see the history of any previous actions that have already been taken. Quick access to the account view also provides us with a history of the account transactions, which is essential for credit control. We can drill down further into a customer to the Transactions tab. Here we can clearly see invoices that are overdue and we can also drill down into a PDF of the invoice. We can view and add any actions, including any promised payments that may have been recorded against a particular invoice, and crucially, we can also dispute or undispute invoices either individually or in bulk. Back on the Accounts tab, actions that are added can be set for a particular member of staff or for yourself and could be for recording promise payments, a follow-up call, anything. And what's more, we can even set an alarm an alarm in the action which will send a message using Opera 3's notification services to remind us. We can easily reorganise our customers into different credit management groups and essential to good credit control we have the ability to put any accounts on stop and to adjust their credit limits as appropriate, all done via the credit management centre. Imperative to credit control is knowing exactly what needs to be chased and when. So the diary tab displays a calendar of all actions that need to be done. We can filter by a particular user, so we could filter for only actions that I need to do today or this week. If we drill into the action, automatically we are moved to the relevant action for that particular customer, which allows us to enter in additional information and record the outcome. All of the related credit control reports have been grouped and placed within the Credit Management Centre itself for ease of use and access. Included in these reports are our print debtors letters, our statements and a new diary action support which can be filtered in many ways to provide powerful reporting and analysis. In addition, a new promised payments report is also available, both of which can be usefully output directly to Excel. Remember, cash is king. It's imperative to know who's got your cash, but you also need the flexibility to incorporate professional debt correspondence into your collection processes. 
So an essential part of streamlining your credit control procedures is to chase those customers that have failed to pay within their agreed contracted terms. Opera 3's Credit Management Centre provides this solution perfectly, which includes an intuitive debt management tool that can mail merge, generate and then either print or email customised debt correspondence. And what's more, the server handles the hard work in the background so that you can continue working. One of the benefits of this solution is that you're not restricted to only having maybe two, three or even four different levels of correspondence. Instead, you have the flexibility to define up to nine levels of debt correspondence that can be tailored to suit your business requirements, which means that the software will adapt to fit your credit control policies rather than the software making up the rules. You choose how you want your levels of correspondence to be created and sent, either by days overdue or by period. And you can also specify a minimum debt level, helping you focus your debt recovery on those customers that will make the biggest difference to your bank balance. In addition, you can tailor individual customer terms, such as their minimum debt level, credit limit, are they to receive printed or emailed correspondence, or should they be excluded from receiving such correspondence altogether? putting you in control of managing sensitive customers. Designing your letters and emails couldn't be simpler using the intuitive designer. Up to nine levels of correspondence can be crafted and tailored to fit your company's credit control needs. But what's more, you can also create up to nine levels of individual customer specific letters for those accounts that may need a more personalized approach or perhaps require their letters in a different language. Of course, you might decide that you wish to use the same letter for each demand for payment, but the choice is yours. You'll be able to use the designer straight away due to its familiar feel and similarities to other software products, meaning that you don't have to learn new controls. Simply pick the level of correspondence that you wish to design and away you go. Intelligent formatting options allow you to powerfully tailor your letters by inserting images, customising text fonts, sizes, colours, highlighting, formatting paragraph options, as well as being able to incorporate tables, bullet points, numbering, just to name a few. But more importantly is the ability to incorporate a diverse range of mail merge fields into your correspondence. This instantly personalises and ensures that accurate, up-to-date information about each account is included, such as the customer's name, address, last letter date, total balance, balance overdue, credit limits and the date this was agreed, their trading terms through to disputed and undisputed overdue amounts. This can then be broken down by one month old, two months old and then three months old and over. This level of freedom gives you the ability to include different information on each level of letter to strengthen the demand for payment message. Now, you may wish the message to become more forceful as the debt ages, but again, the choice is yours. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can design your letters in, say, Word, for example, and simply copy and paste, add in your mail merge fields, save away, and your letters are ready to go. In addition, if you ever need to create another level of letter, you can copy and paste from a previous letter and amend as appropriate. Now, it might be that some customers need a more tailored approach or maybe their letters in a different language, in which case easily pick up the account and then draft customised letters specifically for that individual account. When emailing debt correspondence, the letter will be attached as a PDF document, in which case you will want a professionally written email referencing the attachment. You might choose to use the same email design for each level of letter or you might want to design a different email for each level to reinforce the severity of the correspondence. Let's see this working. You can choose how and when you wish to generate your debt correspondence, either individually or in bulk, daily, weekly, monthly, it's entirely up to you. You can even select the level of letter, a range of levels or a range of customers that are due to receive the next demand for payment. Impressively, this facility can generate both letters to be emailed and 
letters to be printed at the same time. You can even choose to preview and approve the customers before their correspondence is generated. And there you have it. So what happens now? Here comes the technical bit. You can now continue working whilst the scheduler handles all of the processing in the background on the server itself. This is known as server-side processing. The letters will be mail merged and the PDF files will be created. Then they will either be printed for those customers who require a hard copy or for those customers receiving via email attached to the relevant email template and sent via an SMTP server. All of which happens automatically in the background, minimising disruption to both you and your colleagues. The email will then be delivered into the customer's inbox, like so. Need to be sent a letter swiftly? No problem. The debt management history instantly displays an audit trail of previously sent letters with drill-down capabilities to the physical PDF which of course can be easily resent at the touch of a button. In addition, for each debt correspondence that is created, a sales ledger note and a credit management completed diary action is automatically recorded against the relevant customer. The account is also updated to display the last letter and the date sent. This provides visibility of key information to all staff that might be working on the account. Still want more of an audit trail? A historical report of all the debt correspondence generated provides a complete audit trail, particularly useful for difficult customers where you might want an instant snapshot of previous demands for payment. The Intuitive Debt Management Facility provides up to nine levels of intelligently tailored debt correspondence per company or per individual customer for sensitive sites. These can then be emailed or printed individually or in bulk. Server-side processing handles the generation, mail merging, sending and printing of correspondence in the background, eliminating disruption to your usual processing. It's flexible, familiar and easy to use. It caters for different types of users and adapts to fit your business's credit control needs. Imperative to know. Sorry, there you go. Um, I hope you learned something new about credit management through that very good little presentation that touches really on all the areas um, within within uh, credit management. And I hope you would have recognised some of the areas we set up in maintenance earlier on. For example, that links through where you select uh, credit management groups and outcomes and that kind of information. Next, I want to look at reporting, and we'll do this quite briefly because, as you know, Opera's got all the reports right uh, built into the system that we're going to be looking at. So, firstly, when you publish any report, you'll get the publisher up, and in some instances in the report layout, you'll have a drop down box that would allow you to select Excel as an output for the report. It's not available for all report types, but you can do that. Alternatively, what you don't see underneath here is the normal outputs of screen, printer, PDF, or email. To view sales details, well, we've seen that earlier on, and I'll go through that, but also a reminder that we view these sales details however you do so. Um, but when you do, always be aware of the hidden reports that sits within Opera. So the little printer icon becomes available when you look at a screen like the account screen there, and it will produce you a report based on that information. Also, right clicking on the form here gives you another menu that would allow you, for example, to copy the data and to paste it right directly into an Excel sheet. Let's have a quick look at that. Open there. Uh, we just have a look at old Adams because we know they've got a lot of information. We look at everything in there. And what I want to mention is this re 
the uh, hidden report becomes available. If I click on that, it brings up a normal publisher. And as you can see, I can select Excel from here. I can name it and I can publish that report. And what it does, it goes away, it fetches um, Excel and it produces that report for me in Excel um, to look at and to do with uh, whatever I need to. But it's only based on the information on the screen. Typical, I've chosen a big one. So there you go. It just puts the information in an Excel sheet for me um, with what I would expect. In exactly the same way, if I right click one of these, I can select and hide columns. But one of the things I can do is the copy data functionality. And I can literally just go to Excel now and paste that in an Excel sheet and it would paste the information that is represented on screen. So reports, there are several reporting sections within Opera, so uh, the sales ledger. So first thing we've got just normal reports. It gives a list of reports there on the screen. Um, got the normal things you would expect, a list of my invoice and credit notes, my receipts and adjustments, allocations report, rectified allocations. If I have a turnover report, list of accounts, et cetera, et cetera, going down the list. But I also have a list of debtors reports. So this, this is where I can look at things like disputed invoices, my debtors report and my retrospective debtors report. I can print debtors letters from here um, if I don't use credit management, um, as well as statements produced from here, a credit goal report, credit control report, etc. A bunch of information, informational reports um, for debit uh, debtors reports for debit management. We also have in our sales analysis uh, area that you define yourself using the set options and the information you want to see. Um, sales analysis is all about current and open period. Then we've got our sales history, which is the same idea, but it's all our historical data and just a way of reporting on that and putting it together in another report. Then we've got our sales view, which I'll spend a moment on when we look at that in a second, because that's an area that a lot of people should be using in the, in, in the software. Um, it's flexible and very good uh, for putting data together. And the last thing I'm going to mention there is the process view so effectively the if you uh, want to view the data which we've seen several times now um, is how you get to it through the action button by double clicking on the icon and then selecting what you want to do or just by hitting f12 on the actual keyboard So I'm not going to run a lot of these reports. I don't think it's really necessary, but um, I'm going to just run the invoice and credit note report for this period. I'm not going to change anything on here because I don't want to. I'm just going to run it for all the sales I've done in this period um, from an invoice and credit note point of view. I'm expecting to, de to see something on there because we've had some invoices, we had some credit notes, and as you can see, I did some a whole load of processes in my in my system, but I'm expecting here at the bottom to see the invoices I've done today, those two, for example, um, sitting on here, and there, I can also run this report to Excel. All these reports gives me the same it's the same idea. It's, it gives me um, a selection box to select information from and then to run the report and it gives me the information and what I'm selecting from there. On the debtors report, I um, want to mention the debtors re actual debtors report and the retrospective debtors report. So the actual debtors report is an, a report that I run. I'm just going to run it for now. It gives me my debtors situation based on all the transactions, everything I've got in as of now. I can't distinguish on this report to exclude anything because it includes everything of my debtors and what the actual current full situation of them are. But in very many instances, I might want to look back at my debtors. My accountant might say, what was your debtors at the end of uh, December? And if I haven't produced a debtors report, 
out exactly on the 31st of December, then I don't have the information at hand. So the retrospective debtors allows me to do exactly that. It allows me to produce the report as at a specific date. I'm just going to select the 31st of December there. And if I run this report now, this report has gone back and it's produced for me a debtors report as it would have stood at the 31st of December with the information that it would have had at that. It would exclude any sales that happened after the 31st. It would exclude any receipts that happened after the 31st because it was all about the 31st of December. Obviously, you would have noticed quite a few different um, selection boxes in here. Again, depending on the information you want to see, this is what you would, would do from there. If you want to see different currencies, all of them together, or even how you want to sequence the report um, for yourself. The analysis uh, report um, within here, within the action, you've got a set options. Within here, you have the ability to come and set up your own own level of report you want to see. So you can see there are four set up here by the system. And if I come in the front, I can see them set up here. The VAT analysis, as well as the transaction list, is standard. It's not changeable. It is what it is. And if you just want to look at, for example, transaction list, period to date, you want to run that. It runs a, re a report for me and it gives me the transactions um, up to date, effectively. I'm expecting really, come on computer, I'll need to see um, transactions for the current period, which is exactly what it's done because it's my sales analysis. It's looking at my open period. In the same way, I have my history, sales history here. Again, this is all about historical sales, um, dates from and to. So I could run this for a year, for example. And if I want a specific sales code, I can just put one in there. Well, there was no sell lease sales for there. Let's just take that out of there. That's my demo data. I'm wondering if there even was anything. Yep, there was something, but it wasn't lease sales, that's for sure. So that's what I can look back at my um, historical data and based on the sales code, I can see for the period selected what the value, what the values, quantities, costs, and margins were of the products or the product sell co sales code. Sorry, that I've selected for that report. Last area here I want to mention is this view. Now I'm going to open the view and I'm expecting to see Bruce's view um, as the default view because that's what we set up earlier on. That's what happened earlier on. Um, I, I set that view up. So no data is being displayed. I said my view should be here, month analysis code account. If I click on the refresh button, based on the date range there, it's going to give me the information. So first I have the year. Going down here, I have the month, then I might have the analysis, different analysis codes, and within them codes, I will have the different accounts that made up those values. What if I want to look at a, a larger date range, for example? I'm going to look at my criteria here at the back, and let's look at my sales codes. Let's uh, just select vehicle sales from there. Let's have selected in there. Let's come to the front. Let's select a whole period and see what we get. So I've selected a long period. I've said to it, I only want to see the sales code of vehicle sales for 2010 till 23 for the last 13 years. So what it's done is it's broken down. So 2012, that was the sales value, 2013, 14, 15, etc. But I can also open one of them and now it will give me all the different months that those sales were in, as I said. 
And if I go further, now it will only have vehicle sales because I specified in the criteria that's all I wanted to see. And within here, I'll see all accounts that contributed to the vehicle sales for that level. But I can also come in here and I can very quickly change the information and it will give me the same information in a different levels here. So now you can see within that I've got an analysis code and account. And that's all it's showing me, the one analysis code with all the accounts that contributed to that. But the sales code is different because it's just got the account. So each account attributed to my criteria here at the back. What you can do further with these things is you can drill down to transactions. So at each level, you can double click and it will show you the transactions that make up all that information for 2014, as you can see. But you can also click down and say, I just want to see January for 2014. You can also click down and say, you want to see just that vehicle sales for 2014. And of course, you can come down to customer level and you can see that and what you are expecting to see should there be a pdf and information behind it is the actual transaction where this information comes from you can copy the data from here and could drop it into an excel sheet or you can create charts using the predefined um, things that pegasus have set out you know, and obviously it would make sense de depending on what you selected down here. I want to mention at this point anywhere in Opera when you are you are able to use this little help file by clicking on it, it brings up the help relevant to where you are and it will always give you a very good overview of what the boxes are, what they are, and why you might want to use them. And while you are looking at that, you've got a little how-to section there, which will also tell you how to do little bits and pieces within this ledger. And as you would have seen right there, you've got a how to use the Creative Management Center. So very good bits of information, even the part of debt management and how you set it all up. So, that kind of takes care of reporting, and I'm really only got one little thing to more to show you, which sits in the utilities area. The utilities area we've used to set up the module mostly, and you continually would be setting up bits and pieces in there as you go along. But the thing you use on a monthly basis in there is the period end, effectively. It gives you this little box with some options of what you want to do. So I'm going to go over into my little opera. I'm just going to change my processing date to tomorrow. And then in my sales utilities, we've looked at set options, all of those. The first, second and third debtors left is here. Is only really relevant if you don't use credit management and you want to use debtors letters. Um, and end of period is one of the areas. So if I click off my end of period, what happens is it puts in the date my system is dated at. It calculates how many days have passed since the last period end was done, and it asks me for some options. So I want to zero as my turnover. I don't think so. You want to block sales postings to the nominal, nominal ledger period three. You can do that. You can remove all completed diary actions relating to credit management and outdated uncompleted diary actions, again, related to credit management. When you say OK to that, it runs through, it creates a period and then pushes your sales ledger into the next period ready for processing. depending on how big your data is, it's not a huge process, but there you go, mine is done. And effectively now, if I just change my date to the 5th of the 4th, just to prove to you, if I go into utilities end of period, now it recognizes the 5th of the 4th, only five days have passed since the last period. And so you can control, make sure that you do the right thing at this point in time. So, 
I think it's fair to say um, that is it for the whole module effectively. We've absolutely covered every area in there. Um, perhaps not in as much detail and as depth as I would like to, but I think time time is um, kind of running away from us now, and this is one of the biggest modules that we had. So, anybody, any questions um, for me relating to this? Any observations? Anything you want to know in addition? Anything I can say? Hi, Bruce. This is Tony. Oh, oh hello, Tony. Uh, I, I notice you're recording it, so it will be available for distribution, will it? I certainly will make it available, yes. Yeah, brilliant. And I enjoyed it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. If there's no other questions from anybody or observations, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I hope it, I hope you kind of learned anything new, something new from the module um, or recognized anything we could help you with. Um, that would be that would be good, too. So remember, I run these webinars now on a monthly basis, the last Thursday of the month, um, really just to concentrate on certain areas of our product to everybody is more more comfortable kind of using it effectively so thank you and next month the 27th of april we'll be tackling the nominal ledger and looking at the nominal ledger in a little bit more depth it's not as big as this module so we'll get to spend more time and proper time on looking at everything within it so thank you everyone for joining um if there's nothing else that's it thank you <laughs>